Okay, in this video, let's focus on making sure your pictures look as good as they can possibly look on Instagram. Hi guys, hope you're well. I am Steve Gerrard. I am a photographer based in Montreal, but originally from the UK, hence the accent. And today I wanna to talk about Instagram and getting your pictures onto Instagram from your computer and looking as good as they can possibly be. Now, Instagram itself doesn't make this easy for photographers. It's very easy to get it from your phone onto Instagram, but if you're taking professional pictures with an SLR or mirrorless camera, and you wanna get those pictures onto Instagram looking their best, what is the best way to do it? And there's a few different opinions about this. So I took a deep dive just for you guys and did a lot of research and what I've come up with is I think the best way to get your pictures looking great, looking sharp and not losing too much quality, if at all, when you upload it onto the platform. I wanna keep this video nice and short, so I'm not gonna go into all the whys and all that kind of stuff. All I wanna tell you is how I think it should be done, how I do it, and two different, fairly quick ways to get your pictures from your camera onto your computer and onto Instagram. So let's start off on the computer. Okay guys, so the first way you can do this is in Adobe Lightroom, which is probably the way a lot of people are doing it. So I've got a shoot here. This is a wedding shoot with uh, Nico and Davis in Montreal from this summer. And let's say I wanna export this picture here for Instagram. So we're gonna go up here, export, and over here you can see I've got a preset especially for Instagram the main things we're going to be looking at are file settings and image sizing and also a bit of sharpening so I always want to export my images as JPEGs that's going to work best especially for online color space make sure it is sRGB if you don't export it at sRGB some of the colors might look a bit weird online and in Instagram for quality, I leave it around 84, which anything above that doesn't really make that much difference to the quality when you're looking at it on a screen. Now down here, image sizing. So resize to fit width and height. Now Instagram will tell you that the images that they post are going to be posted at 1080 pixels wide. So you may have seen other videos telling you that that is the size that you want to be exporting your images at for Instagram. And actually that's what I've been doing the whole time up until I started doing some research. Now, what I found is that if you export at double that, which is 2160 pixels, then actually Instagram will still compress that down to 1080 when it's actually posting it onto Instagram, but the amount of quality retained in the image if you upload it at 2160 pixels is much, much better. I was actually amazed at how much worse the 1080 picture was compared to the 2160. Now I've tried a few different sizes above 2160. I tried 2700, I tried 3000 pixels and Maybe there was a slight difference in those, but to be honest, it was really, really difficult to tell. But the difference between 2160 and 1080 was very obvious. So I highly recommend going for this 2160 pixels size. And then you can sharpen for screen because that's where people are gonna be looking at it. And over here, I would just set it to standard. Anything above standard, and it might start looking a little bit weird with over sharpening. So. That seems to work really well for me. And then you can hit export. Now you might wonder why I've got 2160 in the width and the height column. It's not gonna make this into a square image. What that's gonna do is if it's a horizontal image, it's gonna keep the width to 2160. If it's a vertical image, it's gonna keep the height to 2160. And we have don't enlarge ticked. So both of those are gonna work well for Instagram. You can kind of ignore all the other stuff down here. Instagram is going to strip your images of any metadata anyway, so you don't need to put that in there for Instagram. I would just leave everything else to the default settings. So that's if you want to do it through Lightroom, which I know a lot of people will, but actually that's not how I do it. I do it in Photoshop and here's how I do it. 
Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I have two images open. You can see I've got a vertical image and a horizontal image. And most people when they're resizing for Instagram would do something like this, go down to image size and change the width there to 2160. And if it was a vertical image, they would change the height to 2160. And that is a perfectly decent way of doing it, but that is not how I do it. This is how I do it. I will go to file and then automate and go down to fit image. And now you can see in the width and the height, I have 2160 in both, as well as the don't enlarge ticked, which means that any image, whether it's vertical or horizontal, when I click this okay, is gonna be resized to 2160 on the longest edge. And that's exactly what I want. And I can do it all in one click like that. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably noticed that all my images recently have had like a white border on them. I really like white borders on images anyway. A lot of the time when I print my prints, I print them with a white border on. And to do that, I made my own little action down here. It's just called white frame. And I click on that and it's instantly going to give my picture a white frame. I'm going to make another video about how I do this. It's really simple. So you can check out my YouTube channel on how to do that if you're interested. And then once I've got the border, I would go to automate, fit image, click OK, and then I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna save it to Dropbox. So here I've got Dropbox, and then I've got a folder called Instagram 2160, and I'm gonna save it in there. And the reason I save it in there is because once it's in Dropbox, I can get it onto my phone from the app on my phone and then download it to my phone and instantly upload it from there to Instagram. But it actually gets even better than that because I have created an action down here called Instagram 2160, which actually starts off by putting the white frame on and then goes through that whole process of resizing it to 2160 on the longest edge and then goes to save it in my Dropbox folder. So all I have to do is click on this Instagram 2160 and within a few seconds, it's gonna put the border on, it's gonna resize it for Instagram, it's gonna save it in my Dropbox folder and close the image, watch. Gone. And now if we go to my Dropbox folder, there it is, resized to 2160 with the frame and I can get that on my phone and upload it to Instagram super fast. I'm also gonna create a droplet. So you go here, automate, create droplet. Over here, you're gonna choose a name and where you wanna save it. So I'm just gonna save it as IG2160. And I'm gonna put that on the desktop. You can see here, it's got my action 2160. A Couple of things check there. And then destination save and close. So I'm gonna click okay. So now you'll see that over on the right hand side, I have this little Photoshop arrow icon, which says IG2160 underneath it. Now, all I have to do is if I want to post this picture here of Al and Ali to Instagram, I can drop it on here and instantly Photoshop is gonna open and it's gonna run that action and it's gonna save it in my Dropbox folder ready for Instagram, but it gets even better because I can do this. I can get that whole folder, drag it on there. It will open Photoshop and every single picture, it is gonna add the border, resize it and save it to my Dropbox. And that's it. Instagram doesn't exactly make it easy to do that, but that is the quickest way that I've found and that's what I've been doing for quite a while now. I didn't want to get too technical with this video but if you have got any other comments or questions then make sure you leave them in the comments below and I will get to those when I can. Otherwise we will see you in the next video. Oh yeah if that was helpful even in the slightest bit then make sure you uh, hit the like button, do the subscription, there's more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.